Hey enthusiasts, it's me, Alvin Monk. Today this is our tenth Inky News interview, and it's the one that's airing on our thir- our first anniversary too. So that's cool. We have Rick Zeef. Hey everybody, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here, uh, especially to hear that it's your anniversary coming up. So happy anniversary to you and to all your viewers. Thank you. Um, so as you know, as you guys know, this Rick Zeef voices um, what's it called? Rick Z voices Dale Little and Bendy Dark Revival. That's the main Bendy thing. But he does some other things, too. He um, voiced Spike from Tom and Jerry, Croaks on the Cuphead Show, and some other things. Lots of stuff. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You're a busy guy. I looked at your IMDb. <laughs> well, uh, I love what I do, and uh, I work hard, but the industry has been very kind to me. That's always good to hear. So I'm going to jump straight into the questions. You ready? I am indeed. Okay. Question number one. Can you give us a little bit of back a little bit of background about yourself before you got into voice acting? Uh sure. Um so I grew up uh doing plays and musicals in high school and, and throughout junior high. Um I loved storytelling and I always loved stories and to be part of storytelling, to be immersed in another time and place and be part of a storytelling thing just made me excited about the whole thing. Um, uh, So I was an actor and then later I became a voice actor, but I was always sort of like the class clown and loved goofing around. (laughs) Um, Well, the class clown thing paid off, I guess, son. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it got me in trouble more times than it paid off, but it paid off later. But yeah, I, that's I, what I mean. It paid off later. Get in trouble in school a few times. Well, that's a different interview. <laughs> yeah. And then we yeah. got question number. Wait, sorry, I, th- I thought you weren't done. My bad. I'm good. Okay, sorry, because every time I always stumble over, I always stumble over my words to cut people off, so I kind of feel bad. But um, okay. Question number two. At what age did you discover your passion for voice acting or acting in general? Uh, interesting. You kind of um, answered this a little bit about the well, acting part. Well, yeah, but um, specifically, um, there was a, a watershed moment for me. When I turned 13 years old, my parents took me to see my first professional play. I had seen school Ooh. plays and smaller stuff, but I lived in the in the suburbs of Boston. And my parents, for my birthday, took me to see Man of La Mancha. You guys can look that up. It's a famous old Broadway musical. At the time, there was a huge star touring the country. His name was Richard Kiley. And it's a a great musical. And what's wonderful about that particular show, it's not just a comedy, but there's a lot of emotional, heady stuff that's woven into it. It's a very beautiful story. And there are people on stage singing and acting and getting me emotionally involved. And when the curtain comes down at the end, 13-year-old Rick Zeef is sobbing so hysterically. (laughs) And my parents like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a sad story. I'm like, no, no, that's a shh, don't just, you don't have to speak, you know, just just relax. And I'm kind of embarrassed because I'm crying. And I'm not crying because of that. I'm crying because I know that's what I want to do with my life. It was like that. I knew I wanted to be the guy on stage moving people, getting people to laugh, to think, maybe change their behavior, maybe think about their world in a different way. The power of entertainment um, became so apparent to little 13-year-old Rick Zeef uh, that it was a life-changing moment. And I knew that I was going to uh, not become, you know, the doctor or lawyer my parents probably wanted me to become. 
but <laughs> ta-da, a performer. Uh, and uh, it's made me very happy. And also I would like to think in the many years I've done stage and screen and audio that I have made people not just entertained, but think and be moved and internalize and, and in my own weird little way, uh, make the world a little bit of a better place. Maybe I'm not saving lives one kidney at a time, but I'm doing it one chuckle at a time, I hope. Mm -hmm. so. Funny you actually mentioned um, saving lives. Um, something like it, it's not exactly saving lives. Like a, it was like um like but it's, it was it involved a doctor. So when um when I was in um what's it called when I was in middle school in 2014 I was in sixth grade starting sixth grade. Okay. I got a knee, I got a knee surgery. Okay. My first ever surgery ever. It was a um they like because I have something called antiochondritis dissecans which is like a dead bone in your knee. Oh wow. They said think of they said think of it like a soft spot on an apple. Oh, okay. So I had to go in and get surgery on it. Oh. Uh, and as many people know, I'm a big Tom and Jerry fan. The day that I got surgery, the new, the one, the one Tom and Jerry um, showed it, you first put Spike in, actually aired. Wow. So, and my doctor, my surgeon, it was came up right before I was at the surgery. I was like, oh man, can I please watch at least the one segment? <laughs> and, and then he said, all right, fine. You can watch the one segment before we put you out. So he let me watch the one segment. See, a new way that we're connected. We're connected in so many ways. This mm -hmm. is exciting. That's great. Well, I I hope your knee has healed beautifully by now. It, it It's getting there, but like I had two more surgeries since, but it, it's, it's about as good as I can get it. So that's good. Okay. Great. Well, see, I was part of your... your uh, yeah, you were. Getting in the right headset for surgery. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was a nervous wreck the first one. So Tom and Jerry and Spike helped me out a lot during that oh. period. Great. You also asked me, um, you know, like what made me discover my passion for voiceover? Yeah. You know, the, the life of, a, of an actor, you know, we're, we're in sort of the gig economy. We're, we're freelance workers. We audition, 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 get a gig, audition, 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 get a gig. Mm -hmm. And we live gig to gig, job to job. Yeah. Some of them, like when you get a series, you do many gigs for that job. But you're trying to marriage your love of this craft with Hey, I got bills to pay. I got rent, car, yeah. insurance. I have life. How do I? Huh? And so a lot of actors, you know, when we're starting out, we have all these side hustles and all these other jobs. Way, way back in the day, I won't tell you how old I am. You can look that up. <laughs> but there was um, uh, a company called Columbia Records. Back in the old days, we had albums. Yes, look that up too. Um, and there was this company called Columbia Records where you could join the club and you'd get like, you know, 15 albums or 15 CDs, I guess, at that point, you know, for a penny, if as long as you bought so many more over a course of a year. And on their TV commercials, I was the Columbia Records kid. I did all their TV commercials on TV. Oh, nice. And then that led to me doing their radio campaign as the kid, they called me. So here I am. I'd never done a voiceover. I didn't know which end of the microphone to talk into. And I'm in the studio. I'm very excited. And it's me wall to wall for the whole commercial. But then the announcer says one line at the end. And that announcer was legendary announcer named Don Pardo. Now, a lot of you viewers may not know his name, but I'm guessing you might know his voice. He was the announcer for Saturday Night Live for 40 years. It was oh my it's God. Saturday Night, that sort of boomy voice that you all know. And so here I am in the studio sweating, hope I'm doing a good job, trying to time it to the 26 seconds they've allotted for the commercial. And <laughs> I'm working in takes and retakes. And then it's dead of winter. In those days, I lived in New York. And out of the elevator and down the hall comes Dawn Pardo. He's got this big heavy coat on, a big red scarf, and he comes in. I step aside for him to do his stuff, and he takes off his scarf. He leans into the microphone. He says, Columbia Records, join now. And he puts on his oh. scarf, and he walks out. And I'm like, that's the gig I want. He, <laughs> he's gone to his next gig, and I'm still doing the full wall-to-wall -wall copy. And I realized at that moment, <laughs> This voiceover thing is cool. When you do yeah. TV commercials, you're on a set for 13 and a half hours and you're waiting. And so he just waltzed in, did a couple of quick takes, and he was his car was still warm. He was on to the next gig. So that was another <laughs> sort of on a business standpoint where I started to think, 
maybe I should weave voiceover work into my theater, film, TV career and commercials. Like this voiceover thing is pretty cool as a business model. So the seesaw started to tip more and more back in those early days to tiptoeing more and more into voiceover work. And then I started doing commercials, then cartoons and video games. And that seesaw has tipped and tipped and tipped and tipped. So now, honestly, Alvin Monk, my world is mostly voiceover, as you can see in my IMDb mm -hmm. credits. I still love film and TV. When those yeah. opportunities come up, if a director asks me to be in something, of course, I'm, I'm never going to say no. I love being on camera. But mm -hmm. that seesaw has tipped pretty tilty toward the voiceover side. But that was the other moment where I realized that's a cool gig. Anyway, long story there. Yeah, that's very interesting. That's really cool though, because I haven't watched much Saturday Night Live, but I do know I do know his voice, the guy's voice. Yeah. So that that's very see, it's so iconic. That's really cool. You got to see him do his stuff. That's really oh, yeah. cool. I barely got to meet him though. It was, whoosh, whoosh, whoa. It was you know, you cool. got to you got to be a bystander to him though. That's kind of cool. Exactly. But that was that was a fun experience to, for my first job to work with such a legend. So now I'm going to ask you possibly a difficult question, but I'm not sure. What is your favorite voiceover job you've ever had? If you can pick one. <laughs> if, if not, you can't answer. If not, you don't have to answer. It would be like asking me what my favorite food is. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> what? You know, I like, I love food. I love desserts, but I like pizza. Like, you know, that game, if you were on a deserted island, you could only have five foods. You yeah. know, like, you know, my head explodes with these questions. So, so. You know, favorite from a creative standpoint, creative from a life. And, you know, I have to say you brought up Spike from Tom and Jerry. Um, you know, I, I've been doing that for uh, a long time. Um, it's kind of a legacy kind of property, meaning, you know, the world knows it. And and yeah. I love that I've been part of that. Um, I love the character. Um, I remember in early days um, when I would have scenes with my son named Tyke. I would want to bring this really heartwarming. He's this big gruff guy, you know. Spike, Spike talks like this, but yeah. but I want to have that sweet side to this big bulldog. Yeah. And they saw that I was really had this tender spot. I got that job while my daughter was very young, and I'm, I love being a dad. And I would try to inject my passion for fatherhood in that role. And and I yeah. think they started to bring Tyke back more and more because I just I just loved. The multi-dimension, um, the multi-dimensional aspect of that. Uh, that is, of course, a favorite. There's one that that I don't hear about enough or talk about enough. I have to give a shout out to a fabulous show. It was called the Mr. Men Show, Ooh. and it was based on the Mr. Men books that were very popular. These little tiny books. There's, you know, Little Miss Sunshine, Mr. Happy, Mr. This, Mr. Oh, Lock. I remember that. They're just like little colored blobs with legs and arms, you know. Yeah. You, you remember those series of books? Okay, great. Well, I remember the well, show more so. Okay, well, the show was great. We we only did one season. I don't think that it was marketed well because it was one of the funniest shows I've ever been on. And most of us played a few different characters. Uh, one of mine, which was my favorite, and I loved doing this guy, was Mr. Nervous. And he was just like just unreasonably anxious about everything <laughs> and i loved playing that he was always just creating reasons to be paranoid and upset and anxious um and and he had sort of a, this voice where i have to do this to it he he was sort of this kind of guy he was nervous and and i came up with a catchphrase they used in every episode whenever something bad happened he'd be like no 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 and i just <laughs> said that in in every episode and I adored pulling my cheek and doing Mr. Nervous on the Mr. Men show. The writing is <laughs> hilarious. If you guys can go find episodes, I think you'll get a good laugh. Yeah, I'll have to go back and rewatch that. <laughs> it's fun. Because I, I remember watching a couple episodes. On, I think it was either Cartoon Network or Boomerang back when they, I think that's where they aired in New York. Yes. I don't remember. I believe you're right. Yeah. I think it was Cartoon Network originally. And it was uh, just a fun show, beautifully written and, and hilarious characters for sure. <laughs> well, thank you for giving me an answer because some I, I include this every time as like a little challenge to see like if like who will answer like who will give me like a solid like a quick answer and who will give me like a long like, most of them are really like like oh I can't pick a favorite but like right, yeah. there's a couple interviews like one interview I had where it's like I forget who it was but like they they mentioned um oh um there's like blah 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 like that's my favorite because I had a good memory with it where like it was it was cool something like that. I don't remember yeah. who it was out of the 10 interviews, but. 
Well, either, there are some, but again, it could be on your mood. One day, if you ask me my favorite poo- food, I'm going to say pizza. The next day, I might yeah. say ice cream. I mean, hey, you know, but, but, but you know, that hit me today. Those two characters, but uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. And then we got tying the, the theme of Bendy with cartoon and video games together. What is your favorite? This is probably another hard one. What is your favorite cartoon character and why? What's your favorite video game character and why? Doesn't have to be one you played. Be any cartoon um, and video game character. Uh, yeah, these are these are uh, great questions. And um, I was that kid who adored cartoons. You know, the Saturday mornings and what I just loved cartoons. There's one that when you ask me, it pops out because I think it also helped form some of my life as a voice actor. When I was a kid, I used to love Popeye. Oh, Popeye I used to watch the really old first black and white ones in that sort the of play show ones. What's that? The Max Fleischer ones, yeah. Yes. And I just, I loved his voice. And I loved his character. But the old Popeye would do these kind of under his breath mutterings to himself. He would kind of mumble stuff. And I just, I thought those were so funny. And I was convinced he was ad-libbing. And I remember as a young, budding actor thinking, that's so cool. He's living this life where he has this outward life talking to other characters. And he would kind of have this aside to himself. <laughs> and I would just be so amused by those. One, I remember all these years later, he sits down at a restaurant with olive oil and he pulls out the menu. And of course, the prop for the menu is just, you know, squiggly lines to look like writing. But the word menu was visible up at the mm-hmm. top. And he goes, oh, menu, don't want any of that. Like just menu <laughs> for menu, and and that I've been laughing about that for decades. Um, so so that is a, one of my favorite. Just I I adored his little asides to himself, and um, and it just always amused me because I I was convinced he did them as the actor must have done them as as improvs. Um, uh, video game characters. Um. I think I'll steer you to one that um, I had the pleasure of doing myself. I've, I'm so a favorite as an actor. Um, mm-hmm. There was a newly released uh, the Harry Potter game that's come out. Um, oh. I got to be the um, Alistair Moody, played by Brendan mm-hmm. Gleeson in the in the films, um, and he's that sort of paranoid guy with that magical you know eye. Um, uh, that was just a fun one to play. They were looking for someone who sounds like Brendan Gleeson, and I came close enough, I guess. Loved being part of that. And again, that's part, when you ask those questions, it's part like, is it the artistic version or like the business? Like, I like being part of a legacy product like Harry Potter. That that feels really good in mm-hmm. the sort of scope of my whole career. Um, again, something I never even dared put it on my bucket list. Uh, this year was released a new Batman game and I got to play Batman. Never thought that that would even be in the realm. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. So that's, uh, it's this really cool boxed game, which is very interactivity, alternate reality play where uh, there there are uh, crime, um, uh, there is uh, all kinds of, like you, it's a box you open and there are um, elements where you have to hold your phone to a QR code and things pop up. It's incredibly interactive. So it's it's super, super immersive and I'm super excited about that. So those are um, those are those are fun things for me. I love those answers, especially the Popeye ones. Popeye's ad living is so good. Yeah, I'm glad it. you know what I'm so glad you know what I'm talking about because a lot of people don't. But you the know, main new, I, yes, as me. a as a kid, I grew up watching both like what besides like Nickelodeon, like Cartoon Network, I'm I was mostly a boomerang kid, which okay. I was I, I'm like I Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, Popeye, like um Betty Boop sometimes came on, stuff like that. I I freaking love old cartoons. They're so good. Oh yeah. And when you watch Looney Tunes and you start to realize that Mel Blanc, you know, like these guys would play so many characters. Yeah, Mel Blanc um, did every Looney Tune, male Looney Tune, except for Amber Fudd. That's yeah. crazy. And you just realize the range they had, and that that is an important. You know, bag of tricks you want to carry with you is your range. So amazing. I'm glad you share your love for Popeye. Yeah, I actually have a, I actually, I, 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 I eh, geez, I have a little um five inch old Popeye action figure I got recently nice. from a company called Boss Fight Studios. They okay. make really cool, like highly articulated action figures. Nice. And they, and they, they're a collectible one. It's um about this big. They have like a, I got Popeye, olive oil, and Bluto. So. Blue does oh, nice. Love Cause, that. Because um, Boss Fight Studios makes really cool stuff. Um, 
Shout out to them. I know they're not watching, but shout out to them. They might now. They're really Someone cool. let them know. <laughs> they're really cool. They're really cool figures. They make the um, they make a bunch of stuff. They're based on like different comics and stuff. They have um the Popeye ones, which I mentioned. They have a figure line based on like, the indie comic called Sam and Max, which is okay. how I found out about them. Mm. And I freaking love their line. It's so cool. They that's, make cool stuff. I see you've got a lot of collectibles, so that's really cool. Yeah. You know, those, those are my all. This is just Funko Pops alone. I got a bin of action figures downstairs. Nice. Which I gotta put somewhere. Very cool, man. And I have like Love shelves that. behind, like over it, at a frame. I have like a really tall one. Yeah, a couple yeah. autograph pieces too downstairs. Very cool. Love mm-hmm. that. All right. Next question is: Do you have any hobbies outside of voice acting? Like, what do you? What, 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 do you have any hobbies? I do. Um. Again, I feel like I'm a creative soul, so a lot of my hobbies are within the arts. Same um, here. I love music. I've always, uh, you know, I started my career in New York City. I was a stage actor. I was doing a lot of musicals, so I was always a singer and uh, a not awesome dancer, but enough to do shows. <laughs> and um, I always adored music and singing. And so um, forever, I was always playing piano and writing songs, and that carried throughout my whole life. I've always written. And um, have been like I was in a band with a bunch of guys for a long time. And to this day, I still write music um, and have like many artists that drawer where all of our ideas are of amazing musicals we're going to write. Well, I have, you know, all these unfinished songs and unfinished musicals that I'll get to someday. But um, I feel like for me, music is fine to be for myself. I don't need to perform my music. I play and I sing and just kind of hang out and do that as a sort of relaxation and sort of yeah. my own little therapy. Um, if I never, you know, wrote the musical or saw it staged fully, I, that's that's fine. I just, I just, it makes me feel fantastic to play music. Yeah, music's really nice. Um, I I have a um a friend who like writes music. He's actually really good at it. He plays oh. the trumpet too. So. Oh, very cool. He's really good. You know, We've one been interesting... friends since second grade. Oh, that's that's great to have mm-hmm. lifelong friends. Um, a yeah. little sidebar comment I'll offer you is I was doing an episode of Tom and Jerry, and um, they needed a song in in one episode, and I quickly sat in the lobby during a break or something, and I scribbled this song, and I said, oh, "Can yeah. I just try this?" and they said, yeah, sure. They turn on the microphone and I and I do this song and they fell in love with it. We're going to use it. And Warner Brothers said, oh, we get to sign you up for ASCAP and you have music rights as the blah, 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 and the composer and the writer. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got a song that's going to be on Tom and Jerry. Well, they had to scrap that whole episode. Oh. And for certain reasons, standards and practices was it was about this crazy scientist who had experiments, but in his in his sort of lab were all these animals in cages and they're like, mm, um, we can't show animals in cages. Let's not do that. Yeah. So when we write these shows or when these shows are written, there are a lot of things that, especially for younger audiences, they have to be very mindful yeah. not to portray. So especially episode, with someone like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. And that episode and my song whoosh, gone. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Did you happen to sing this? Like, did you do it as Spike or like a, is it gonna your vo- standard voice? Um, I think I did it. Oh no, I did it um as a different character in it. I think it was like a a monkey or somebody. Oh okay. Just, that that was not done as as Spike. Yeah, I was gonna say. I did lots of stuff, lots of characters. Okay. And I know I'm gonna save that question for last. The one I'm doing, I'm gonna skip. We right. skip that one because I want. To, I always ask this one last. I'm going to highlight it so I don't forget. But um, we're going to jump into the bendy questions now. Okay. And um, let's see. So number one, how does it feel to be a part of the bendy fandom and series? Uh, I have to say, um, of all the projects I've been part of, the bendy fans are hands down the most passionate looking at all the social media and the threads and the talks. And uh, I mean, I just love, you know, I said before, I like being part of legacy things. It's great. But being part of something 
where the fans have so much verve and fervency to, to be part of mm -hmm. this universe, uh, it feels really good. So simple answer. It feels amazing. You know, I love the the passion that the fans have. So shout out to all of you guys watching right now. I know why you're here. Yeah, thank you guys for keeping keeping um sticking with us this past year. It's been great. We got the interview and, with some lovely people. Yes, and happy anniversary to all of you guys because you've probably been tuning into this for a year too. Yeah, they have been. We have we have a very loyal fan base. I love it. I love every one of them. Nice. Then we have okay. This one's kind of like before you got introduced to Benny. It was um, what is your what was your first impressions if you had any of the series before? Did you even know what it was beforehand? I'm going to be honest, I didn't. You know, okay. uh, I'm I didn't know the universe. Um, yeah. Okay. I looked, once I got cast, I looked online and read what I could and saw clips, and I could quickly see the universe that the Meatly had created. And I'm like, this is really cool, really dark, and like funny, creepy. Um, yeah. And um, I thought this is really cool. I loved the look of it and the feel of it. So, um, although I didn't, I didn't know of it beforehand. Um, I just yeah. thought it was a super cool universe. Yeah, um, I most most of the people who um, I interviewed, like a couple of them knew like about it beforehand, but not many of them, which I'm kind of surprised about a little bit. But it's still cool though. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, and yeah. you know, yeah. So, I, I, you know, guilty as charged, didn't know about it, but I'm no, so, you're fine. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm part of it. And then we got, how did you land the role of Dale Little? Was it difficult? Um, well, I got the role like we get most of our roles. An audition okay. comes in as an email from your agent with a little description of the character the project, and then your lines. Once in a while in animation, you get a picture of somebody, which, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. If I, words, if I can see the character, wow, that really feeds me. But there was no art on this, and it was just they wanted this guy. So I did that. It was in my stack of auditions for the day. I auditioned. Here's my booth right behind me, and I, I get in there every day and, and record stuff. And um, so in terms of how I got it, it was very standard, you know? And because it said Bendy and I didn't know what that was, it's just a video game. OK, and I'll do it. Was it hard? Not really. Um, interestingly, I'm from Boston. I'm an East Coast guy. I grew oh, up yeah. there. I grew up with a reasonably prominent Boston accent. I don't know if your viewers can hear the remnants of it, but I've worked pretty hard to get rid of it. Living out here in California now for a very long time. You need uh, a little bit because I'm on the East Coast while I'm in Pennsylvania. So okay, but there's a little East Coast thing, and of course I moved to New York for many years, so there's there's maybe an East Coast vibe I give off. But suddenly doing a high dive into the universe I was immersed in growing up, you know, so it wasn't that hard to get right into Dale. He's over there, you know. I parked my car right at the party over there, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't wicked hard to park because I was early. You know, just all those vowels. And I gave him a little gruff, blue collary thing. And it was just like, I, I knew those guys. I grew up in that universe. And the music of that voice was right back here. And it just summoned it. And out she came. He came. And they came. Whatever. Uh, so was it difficult? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I, I, I love Dale. Dale's, Dale's probably my favorite audio log in the game. Not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that just because I'm, I'm interviewing you. I'm genuinely serious. Um, because in the first game, Wally Franks is my favorite. If you if you ever like heard of him, okay. he's like he has a game somewhat on Brooklyn accent. Um, or okay. Boston, where it's like he's he's the guy who like says I'm out of here, and he's like a really he's like a jan like a um slacker janitor. Oh, oh and, I love that. In Boston, we our phrase for that is I'm bald guy. I'm bald guy. <laughs> I'm bald guy. What are you talking about? I'm out of here. <laughs> Out of air. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'm bald guy. I gotta go. I'm bald guy. <laughs> Use but, that. Um, Spread that one around. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, come on. Spread it around. What? And get it in the bed. Dell little bald guy. Get it. Get it. Get some fan art made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Next question is. Uh, oh, I, I was almost about to read the same one off. Jeez. Um. How did you? You already answered that. It was how you come up with the voice. You answered that already. 
Um, what are your per- this is the last Bendy question before we jump into like the sure. other like project questions? Yeah. How did you? I mean, what are your personal hopes for the the future of Bendy as a franchise? If you could like control like like persuade the Meatly and, and Mike to do what do like an idea, what would you do? Wow. I love answering asking this question every time. <laughs> I would have to say, look, they have tendered this property so beautifully and fed their fans such great material. Whatever they can come up with, and I'm going to answer the question this way. My hope is simply, first and foremost, that it continues. Again, I have to go back to the fans of this franchise are so passionate that I hope for their sake, there's just more and more material for them to chew yeah. on because they love it so much. So. I'm not even going to hazard a thing. Hey, you guys should do an episode on, you know, I feel like wherever the next incarnation is, I fully trust, you know, the, yeah. the crafters of that. But my my big hope, it's not just, I hope they do more so I can work more. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love, hey, who doesn't want Dale to come back? Write your letters in, write to Meatly. But um, <laughs> just that the fans, you know, you know how it is, you want more, more, more. They were very patient. Mm-hmm. I know th- this last one, took a bit of time to get out and there were teasers and hopes and threads. When's it coming out? And it must've been very gratifying when it finally got launched. It was. So, <laughs> tell us about that. What was it like for you? Waiting, waiting, waiting game. Okay. So um, I, I've been a Bendy fan since the first game came out way back in 2017. Right. But, um, but I was a, um, I, I came along when, cause they originally released the original game chapters, like five chapters. They released them like separately. Uh-huh. Um, I came along like right before the second chapter came out, so I was there pretty much from the start. Wow. Um, it was pretty. It was like twiddling your thumbs, like when are we gonna get something about this game? But um, <laughs> but like I, I hope like for like the future, they they they, like, I think they already are doing this, but like I hope they work better like communicating like because they want radio silent. That was like a big problem that like, people have with like um. Like why um like people are so impatient because right. they didn't they, they we got breadcrumbs pretty much which I I understand like you can't show off too much but like show off a little bit more it gives to give fans like some more like, satisfaction like though oh this thing's still coming keep coming keep grabbing like the bits it's still coming yeah that's a good note little teasers mm-hmm. along the way to keep you enthused yes like I mean they did have like te- occasional teasers but not as much as like the first game right or like, or, like not as much not much. Right. So, but like, I still love this universe so much. I did. Did you get a game. chance to hear? Uh, sorry, I interrupted. But no, you're uh, fine. Did you get a chance to hear that sort of musical compilation that they put together? Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. That was, I, I almost said, um, I was about to say that was the last question, but I was about to say I lied because I just, I forgot to put that in there about the, like the musical thing you guys worked on. Yeah, it was just a funny thing. Again. Not only are the fans like just fervent for this, but but I have to say the other voice actors involved were all talking and getting connected and talking about marketing and getting involved yeah. and signings. They are just as passionate, which is also amazing. And there was a real cohesive element among the actors. And it was their idea to kind of put this musical thing together that was appropriate for each of the characters. And it was it was just really fun to do. And I remember um, I was in Boston visiting my mom and I was sick at the time. I said, we really need this piece of music. So I'm like, <laughs> OK, you know, and I was so glad to be part of it. Uh, it's worth looking up. It was there was some really funny bits of music in that yeah. compilation. Guys, if you haven't seen it yet, look up the um on DA Games channel. I think it's on. It's on um, the Joey Drew All Star Review. I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look that up, guys. It's really good if you haven't seen it. Also, hi Cat. I'm I'm Cat did amazing work on it with like a bunch of the other Fendi fan ambassadors. The um, um, what's it called? The actual the professional voice actors, the fan ambassadors. Everyone involved did a great job. The artists, everyone. Yeah. They're amazing. It was amazing. Chef's kiss. Elements. Chef's kiss. I'm with you there. <laughs> so good. All right. Um. Then we got. We have that that again, so I can ask that last. Um. Let's see. Okay. Now we get into the various questions that aren't like about Bendy, but it's all about voice acting. Sure. If you th- this one might you can you can skip this one if you want, but like, how did you land the role of Spike from Tom and Jerry? I have to know. 
it's and actually, you kind of briefly talked about it. No, it's a fairly interesting story for me. Um, you know, when I got that role, I had already been an actor and a voice actor for many years, but um, I still audition. I still hustle. It's my job to audition. Now, once in a while, yeah, you're given jobs without, without auditions. They know you. They like you. They remember you. Hey, would you play this role? But I still hustle, man. Yeah. And at that time, they asked if I would come in and do what's called scratch track. And so for your viewers that don't know what scratch track is, when they are putting projects together, they want to put temporary voices in. Oh. And instead of someone in the office who isn't an actor doing it, they'll bring in actors. And honestly, we actors are happy to do scratch track because maybe you'll like us, maybe you'll, you'll remember us for another role, maybe for that role. And uh, the people that were putting these original sketches and, and animatics together uh, knew me, knew my voice from other projects, and said, well, Rick's got sort of a deep, he can do that gruffy thing. Let's 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 bring him in to do scratch. So I'd drive out to Glendale. It's about a 45-minute drive, and I would offer my services. And then a week later, could you come in and do some more? And a week later, could you do some more? I did that for over a year, just trying to lay seeds and trying to get them to fall in love with what we call scratch love. Like they get you so used to it. They go, we can't imagine this any other way. That's that's how we get our talons in is just get them used <laughs> to you. You can imagine my heartbreak when an email came in after all that time saying, now casting Tom and Jerry, we're looking for the role of Spike. And that went oh. wide from LA to New York, looking for the role of Spike. I was crushed. And I was so embarrassed that, oh, my God, they must hate me. I'm not even going to audition. And my agent was, no, you you have to audition. I'm like, oh, I've been doing it for a year. <laughs> and so I got in my booth and I, I, I did my spike. I'm not going to get this, you know. Well, you all know the end of that story. And I got it. And yeah. it was a lifelong thing, nine years and counting uh, with, you know, different versions of series and Christmas movie specials, role of a lifetime. So sowing seeds, doing favors, offering your services, saying yes, yes, yes to almost anything to help further your career. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you're the current voice of Spike because. Thank you. Like you mentioned earlier, you put, you put like more heart in like than the previous voice actors of Spike. Like granted there's like obviously, um, like the more gruff side of Spike, but like you said, there's a, he has the hard side when it's, when it's come to his son. So if you were here, I'd give you the hug right now, Dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how that made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I do cameos. Let me know. Uh, I got to play all kinds of roles on the show. You know, when you do cartoons, mm -hmm. um, their expectation is. Maybe you're not like Mel Blanc, but that you can do a lot of different roles. And when they have yeah. guest roles, they expect you to pull things out of the hat. Like, oh, we have a few lines as a wacky French chef or, you know, the bombastic Slavic dude or the office dweeby guy. And so yeah. um, they don't want to pay another actor to come in and do that. They, they expect it to come from us. So I got to play all kinds of really just, you know, silly, fun roles. And one that recurred on many episodes was Meathead. The, the big dumb guy is not very smart, but he, very sweet. You know, just kind of a big dumb doofus. Um, I got to play Scully, a floating skull in one of them, I think. And uh, <laughs> just really fun, you know, characters that that are meant to sound extremely different from your core character, which, of course, was yeah. Spike. Um, next question. Okie doke. Um, it's also another time. And, I'm two more times. I know you already answered one of them. It, right. was, um, it was, um, did you watch any other Tom and Jerry characters? But you answered that already. Lots of them, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, this one, I'm not sure if you like know exactly, but how many Tom and Jerry projects roughly have you been in since you landed the role of Spike? Roughly. There were some, there were different versions of the series. There was the Tom and Jerry show. There was Tom and Jerry New York. And then, um, there's a new one that's made for younger audiences, more of a, more of a preschool version of it. Uh, there was some spe movies, TV, like specials, a Christmas special. There are four or five different sort of versions of it, I would say. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, cause like I keep up with all that Tom and Jerry stuff. Good. I, I, abs I absolutely eat it up. I love Tom and Jerry. <laughs> oh, that's great. They need a Spike Funko Pop, man, cause like I need them putting them next to Tom and Jerry somewhere. You and I are gonna put that in the works. 
<laughs> Wonder Brothers, if you're, I know you like, I know you're not watching this Wonder Brothers, but make a Spike Funko Pop, license it out. I'll buy it. They might now. <laughs> I'll send them a link to this interview. Thank you. Oh my god. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So we got some cuphead questions now. Two two cuphead questions. Alrighty. Um, how did it feel giving the character of Crooks the, the toad a voice? How did you come up with the voice? Because in the game he doesn't have a voice. He's right. like a boss you fight. That's right. Um you know, I said earlier that a picture, you know, is, says a thousand words. I mean, when they send me a picture of a character and then give me some written description of his personality and the universe that they live in. And then again, I got to watch some I went online to see just some video gameplay to see that yeah. again. It's sort of like that old Popeye look that sort of, you know, what do they call it? Rubber hose kind of Your rubber hose. That, rubber hose. that that that. that vibe get me that old timey new york kind of you know he was even scratchier than 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 spike was it just it just kind of comes to you and again when you do voiceovers you have to be careful not to audition with a voice that you can't sustain for a long session because yes. you don't want to do something that hurts and can do damage to your instrument it's it's not a good thing so i just experimented with how gruff and scratchy could i go um because i knew also he had to sing a song and i wanted to be able to sustain that which was yeah. super fun um, so it just comes to you. I mean, the, there's a lot of music playing in my head, Alvin Monk. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. My doctors are coming. You know, I hear things and then they just kind of come out my mouth. I, I hear what I want it to sound like based on the picture and the character description. Yeah. And then it doesn't take me a long time to get the voice out. Then I make a few refinements and adjustments based on things like body size or any physical things that that the character yeah. is drawn like. That reminds me of like um what I do because I'm I'm personally I'm an artist who's training the like going to college to do animation that's what I want to do for a living make a cartoon. Great, love that. And, and um like it reminds me of how like like it like character designs like, just come to me for some reason backgrounds I can't do for the life of me but character <laughs> designs come to me. Quick. Well, well characters remember they stand in front of the background so we know yeah. which is more important. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm gonna let's see, let's look at this one. Okay, we have four more total questions. You can ask as many as you like. All right. Um oh wait, I had that duplicate. What the heck? That was the favorite voice roll one again. <laughs> favorite roll. So we have three yeah, more. I, look, I, I can piggyback on that. I've had some some exciting roles. Of course, we've talked a lot about Spike. Um, I do sound like I've had the opportunity to play sound likes as Fred Flintstone several times that's really? a really fun one for me yeah and so for you know commercials and there was um a bunch of you know different kinds of products um some i can't talk about yet but um uh yeah i've gotten to play him in um uh various licensed things so that's cool because i remember jeff bergman was like the one who did it before like he's like the main one who does it yeah they, you know once they license things out they they find you and there are yeah. probably multiple people who play various things and that's really I've, cool actually <laughs> i've gotten to do a bit it's it's been a blast because like i mentioned earlier i'm a sucker for like hand by barra cartoons yeah the old stuff because most of my collection i i wish i could maybe after the interview i'll turn around and show you yeah, yeah. Like a whole, i have like see. two whole shelves of hand by barra pops wow very cool Love so that. like that's why i want spike to add to it we'll um, make that happen um, let's see. Then we got so we have this one's about your voiceover teaching class. Okay, but I was researching a little bit. Uh oh. Yeah. So I was gonna ask, what do you what do you teach there exactly? Can you give like a basic breakdown? Sure. Um, I've been teaching voiceover for a long time. Um when I first started, people saw that I was working a lot and they would say, um, oh, can you coach me on this audition I have for this thing? And and um I realized, you know, I had been a theater director and I was good at communicating what I think is needed from a role and a scene to someone else. And I was doing so much of it that I said, I have to start a group class. And it sort of mushroomed out that I was very busy as a coach um, as an adjunct to the rest of my world. So I teach on nights and weekends and I have for many, many years and I still do. So I do both group classes 
where I teach commercials, a lot of animation and video game character development is the main focus of it. But even things like some people want to do audiobooks or corporate narration. Um, so I teach all of that. And I also relegate sometimes some few sessions during the week for one on ones when someone has like a specific audition or mm -hmm. may want to work with you privately and a group setting isn't really uh, the place where they would flourish the best. Sometimes one on one is better for certain people. Yeah. So I I have such a zeal for teaching. Um, I just love doing it. I, I can't do it full time because I'm very, very busy. But it scratches itches in me that, you know, are unique to teaching that I don't get just from acting and directing. Um, I adore helping nurture people to help their creativity come out. Um, so it's it's an incredibly rewarding thing for me to do to coach. Um, again, the core of it is how to develop characters. We're talking a lot today about cartoon and video game characters, yeah. and that just means embodying embodying embracing and voicing a character that's different than you it may be that they want a voice just like yours but a lot of times you're having to create a yeah. different voice print the big trick to this isn't just to take wacky voice and drape it over text and call that character work the big surprise when i coach for a lot of people is it's an acting class it's not just a voice class yeah so you might be the craziest most outlandish character but if what you're saying stems from some kind of truth and then it's blown more and more and more out of proportion to this crazy voice we talked a little bit about the heart that i've i've hoped to put into spike it all stems from who am i what do i want who am i speaking with what is my history with that person? What is this moment about? As long as those bullet points are well met, we use those in stage acting, in film and TV acting, and so I do with all acting, whether it's video games or animation. So when I coach this work, the questions I plague my students with isn't, hey, you know, what is that voice as much as, what do you want right here? Why did you say these words to that character? Mm -hmm. And I really can tell you from all the directing and casting that I do, we haven't talked much about that, but I do a lot of animation directing, is when I'm listening to auditions, and I get a lot of them, we're auditioning for a role, I may get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, it takes me days to listen to them all. Why do some auditions rise above others? What is that thing? And the thing I can point to is they have embraced the, the meaning of their words they have analyzed the text to actually live, breathe life into those words more than just voice print over text and call that yeah. act. So the big differentiator is acting. And so any voice actor, and I don't call myself a voiceover artist as much as I call myself a voice actor, I like the word actor in there, is study improv, study acting, do scene study, do a play. Understand what an actor's headset is of taking text analyzing it and then executing that analysis so that's what you could expect if you want to work with me you killed two birds with one stone with that answer because that was the last question i was going to ask actually was then he kept your advice from people about voice acting so it's almost like you knew <laughs> well there you go and and i'm sure your uh viewers can find a way to find me you can you can post uh, any contact info you want but uh come and get me all right well um that this has been the ah jeez this has been the um the 10th and the 10th episode of Inky News on the first anniversary of our series thank you to Rick for joining us for that occasion and i will see you enthusiasts next time see you I guys thank you can i just jump in to say thank you again thank you viewers for hanging in there for this lengthy interview alvin monk thanks for having me and to all of you happy anniversary the end, the end.